Now, as I've said multiple times, I don't like to bring up problems unless I have a solution or have a couple ideas to throw in the ring, right? It moves us forward. So we've talked a lot about the transfer portal, talked a lot about NIL, a lot about Nick Saban this week. I'm going to fix the transfer portal in less than a minute and a half. All right, here we go. First rule of the way the transfer portal should be. You get one free transfer outside of the conference you play in, and it can be up or down levels. That's fine. You get one of them, but it's got to be outside the conference. Now, rule two, if your head coach leaves, not the offensive coordinator, not the linebackers coach, if your head coach leaves for any reason, players can transfer once again wherever they want. So even if they've already transferred once, if the head coach is fired or he takes a job in the NFL or resigns, you can go anywhere you want, including inside the conference. Now, number three, if a player wants to transfer inside the conference they play in, if you want to go from Tennessee to LSU, without your head coach leaving, you must sit a year. That's just within your own conference. Number four, if you want to transfer a second time after you've already exhausted that first free transfer and your head coach is not leaving, then you must sit a year, all right? Next, grad transfer rules stay the same. I thought about maybe eliminating it, but that's fine. The grad transfer, if you graduate, you're still within the four for five, you can transfer wherever you want. I'm good with that, all right? Next, hardship waivers still exist. Your mom gets sick, something happens, you can send in that waiver, which will be judged by the new governing body. Hopefully I'm a part of it, but probably not. And then lastly, the transfer portal window day should be reduced by 25%. Hell, I'm good with going 50%. You want to cut it in half. There's way too many days that the transfer portal window is open. They're already trying to cut it down. And those are some simple rules. And since it's so simple, and since it's so obvious, and since it would help, they're definitely not going to do it. But that's how we could fix the transfer portal in less than two and a half minutes. What ideas do you have? What do you guys think? David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback, and then replacement Cohn. And you see Pylon Boy sitting right there front and center. <laughs> replacement Cohn, we know he's with me 100% on the way to fix the transfer portal. Uh, David Cohn, first off, happy Flame and Dragon Friday, my friend. Congratulations on the dub. And then also, it's that simple. Yeah. The, the fixes could be that simple, and you eliminate a, a lot of the problems, right? That, that could, because now, and we're going to uh, ask Pete Nackas from On3 about this, the, we just had another rule passed where you can basically, you want to transfer again within the academic year, the current year, there is no penalty due to the injunction that, that was just passed. Yeah, but it doesn't matter how rational your thoughts are on the transfer portal, nothing is going to change because now we've entered an era where any attempt to prevent players to be able to transfer at a moment's notice wherever they want to go is seen as limiting the players, it's seen as exploitation, and it's Depression. seen as violating antitrust. This is the same thing that we're yeah. seeing with NIL. That's why both of these things are playing out at the same time. I mean, I'll just offer a little bit of my own personal perspective here. When Rich Rodriguez came into Michigan in place of Lloyd Carr, the offensive system completely changed. It was not it was not conducive to a six foot seven drop back passing quarterback. I thought about transferring every single day because I knew I wouldn't be the starting quarterback at Michigan. That would mean I already redshirted a year. When I got there, I was going to have to sit out another year. Because of that, though. I decided to stay because it was important to me to get a degree from the school that I had already started at. And I thought, if I'm good enough to go to the NFL, I can make it as a backup quarterback here. Matt Gutierrez already did that a few seasons ago. He played for the Patriots for like five seasons, something like that. Yeah. Said, I'm gonna remain committed to this school. I wish more kids would go and commit to a school, go and commit to a place and see it through. But I do understand that circumstances change. You talked about the hardship waivers. That always, that's always been the case where guys can, can grant a special hardship waiver. But the idea that, well, the coaches can leave at any moment's notice and take another job, so the players should be able to as well. That's a difficult proposition for me. And I understand people get excited when they get a really good player into their school from a transfer portal, but you can't tell me that any college football fans out there are really excited when they see one college athlete playing for a different school all four years of their career. To me, it doesn't seem like that's the most successful avenue for them, not only to go to the NFL, but just as a person moving forward. So I don't know if it's gonna change as long as people see this as like an antitrust case. That's why I think 
even if there is no collective bargaining agreement, which that's the only thing that could truly fix this, even if there's not, maybe the conferences could come together, especially if they do the rev share idea that we've been talking about mm -hmm. and say, hey, let's at least as a conference say if a kid transfers out, he has to transfer out of the conference. Yeah, well, I, I think that should that should be one of the rules. I think that would eliminate a lot of the, the most egregious versions of tampering, right? Because it's one thing to go from Florida to Utah, right? It's another thing to go from Florida to Tennessee. We just saw Trevor Etienne transfer from Florida to Georgia with no penalty, with absolutely no penalty. Now, if the head coach leaves or is removed, I think that should be a caveat to give you that it just adds a free transfer year. There's the happy medium there. When you talk about, this is what drives me nuts when people bring up the, well, coaches can go wherever they want and do whatever they want. Well, number one, th that is their profession. Mm -hmm. Coaching is their profession. They went to school, they either played, they coached, they got their degree. Now that they're the head coach, they're also under contract. A lot of these coaches that go to other places, right? Th there are clauses in their contract where they may not get a certain amount of money if they do go to another place. Or they may be in breach of contract or have to pay back certain amounts of money to go to other places. And if another place wants them, it's because they came and got them. It's not the coaches like, you know what? I'm tired of being here at Bowling Green. I'm just going to go coach at Forest State. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not how that works. So I, I think we got to be able to separate the two. And, and there is caveats. And, and I went through them. It's not this huge, complicated process. But like you said, now anything that goes against the, the quote-unquote student athlete, which you might as well throw that out the window, Going forward, that term, I'm about tired of hearing that term already. If we're going to be in the part of the business, yeah, student athlete. I don't want to see these commercials where I'm a student first. That's why it's student athlete. No, BS. The, the rules have changed now. It just, to me, when when I look at, at the availability of being able to transfer, having that, I don't even want to call it a deterrent, but having a consequence if you've already transferred once or you want to transfer within the own conference, that, that's a good thing. And you brought it up. And every circumstance is different. But that happy medium of, hey, the head coach leaves. Now you can go wherever you want. If you want to go from Tennessee to Arkansas, if you can, it, you can. If you want to go from Auburn to Alabama, you can. But we need to have rules set up. It's just, it's, it's just like the, the NIL contracts. If it's just one-sided, right, it's going to create a problem. And at this point now, everybody's so afraid of getting sued. And we're going to talk about this when we get Pete on from on three. Uh, you, you can't budge. You can't move. And now they're up at Capitol Hill doing what they do best, which is yelling at each other and everybody complaining, but nobody finding a solution. There you go. It's that simple. We could come together, hands across America. Now, I was thinking, it. would it be beneficial to create some sort of rule that's similar for coaches? You know, like if, if unless you get fired, you can't just jump to another school that's within the conference. Like we just saw the Buckeyes running back coach is going to- Well, you can put it in the contract. In Nothing stopping anybody from putting that in the that, contract. And that's the thing. Like, and, and so the players are saying, well, we don't have a contract, so we can't even collectively bargain. That's why- that's why something has to work through the conferences. Well, that's that's what we've proposed. Yeah. When you sign, if you go to Auburn, right, you are signing, you, you know, you have the NLI. Yes, obviously you're signing a scholarship with Auburn, but it's also through the Southeastern Conference, mm -hmm. right? That That's <clears throat> a way for you to kind of, that's kind of your conductor of those rules, right? You want a rev share. You want us to give you part of this media rights money. Okay, well, you are signing up. All right, to not be an employee, but be part of the Southeastern Conference and you are making money from it. Therefore, you have to follow our rules because there needs to be a governing body, mm -hmm. right? We have to have a governing body. There has to be structure. It can't just be the wild, wild west, which is what we have now and the NCAA is disappearing. So there needs to be a governing body. There needs to be structure, but do it through the conferences. Hell, we're gonna end up with two of them eventually anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna make it easy. Uh, we wanna know what you think. What's up, YouTube? Thanks for joining us. As we march to 100 trillion followers, the most of any YouTube channel there is, subscribers, whatever you want to call it, we need you to do your part. Have you done it today?